Hey guys, in today's video we are looking at the brand new Voigtlander Nocturn 35 f1.5 version 1 and version 2. I have both the matte black version and the silver version. Stay with me and I'll tell you about the special black nose edition that I have here. This video will give you spec, everything you need to know and comparisons against the Voigtlander Nocturn 1.2, 1.4, F2 Ultron, F2 Apo, and I'll also give a mention how it compares to the Leica Similux 35 1.4 FLE version. Hey guys, Matt here from MrLeica.com. Recording this video in January 2023. The Voigtlander Nocturne 35 1.5 was released at the end of 2022. Flaghead Photographic kindly sent me the lenses a couple of weeks ago. I took the lens with me to Spain for 10 days and I took the Leica M240 to try to get the best possible image quality using our M body versus a an SL or a non like a body. These are really beautiful lenses. Let's first look at some spec, then we'll look at some example photos, the characteristics of the lens, and then we'll do a quick roundup and my opinion on whether or not I would buy this lens or whether you may enjoy buying this lens yourself. So it's worth knowing there are two types of this lens and three finishes. Voigtlander call these their vintage line lenses. However, the Type 1 and Type 2 both have the same tab. The Type 1 is made of aluminium and is matte black. And this looks absolutely fantastic on a matte black like a camera. The Type 2 is made of brass, it's a heavier lens and it's available in silver or black. So those are your three types. If you want something that's lighter to carry around, I love the aluminium version. One common complaint about many of the Voigtlander lenses is people don't like the, the silver nose. But don't worry, you can actually get yourself a black nose version like this. All you do, this could be a slight anticlimax for you, you get the silver nose version and then you just attach a black step ring, in this case 39 to 43, and you turn it from a, a silver nose to a black nose. If you're using a black lens on a black camera for say street photography, this is going to make it a lot more stealthy and step rings cost a couple of pounds on eBay, links below. If you're new to Voigtlander lenses, Voigtlander make proper metal and glass lenses. So no electronics, really super smooth focus throw, it's got a clicky aperture with half stop aperture clicks. It's range finder coupled from 0.7 meters to infinity, but this has got a minimum focus distance of 0.5 meters, which means if you use any of the cameras with live view, you can get that little bit shallower depth of field by shooting at 0.5 meters. The markings on the lens looks very neat and you've got your zone focusing on the top for any of you that like to scale focus rather than using the viewfinder. In terms of looking through the viewfinder, there is a very slight viewfinder blockage when your lens is fully extended, but when you shoot at infinity, it's like 0.1% focus blockage, so almost no focus blockage. I really like the narrow nose of this lens compared to the other Voigtlander lenses. This has got a 39mm field size and it doesn't come supplied with the hood. You're only going to get front and rear lens caps in the box. Voigtlander do supply hoods that fit this lens. It's the LH4N or the LH12. In terms of optical formula, the lens gives you nine elements in six groups with two double-sided spherical elements, which is a similar-ish design to the Nocturne 35 1.2 from seeing some diagrams online. This lens comes with 12 aperture blades and that's useful for both bokeh and sun stars. We'll come onto that in a second. In terms of weight, it depends on if you get the type 1 or the type 2. As I say, type 1 is aluminium. That only weighs 188 grams, which is about 6.6 .6 ounces. Type 2, made of brass, for those of you that love brass heavy feeling lenses, that weighs 284 grams, which is 10 ounces. In terms of focus rate, it goes from roughly the 7 o'clock position to around the 4 o'clock position. So what's that, 110 degrees-ish, something like that. So smooth, really nicely dampened. Yeah, very nice feeling lens. Size-wise, here it is next to other Voigtlander 35mm lenses. As you can see, it's bigger than the Ultron, the 1.4 and the Scope R but it's smaller than the 1.7, the Apo, and the 1.2. The Voigtlander is smaller than the Leica Spherical FLE, but bigger than the Leica 1.4 steel rim. How much does this lens cost and how does it compare to other Voigtlander lenses? If you buy this lens in the US, B&H is selling them for $899, so $900. And if you're in the UK, £849. If you're living in the UK, if you buy from Robert White, 
I can put a link below. You can get 5% off using the Mr. Like a Code. It applies to all Voigtlander lenses. It's not affiliated, but hopefully it'll help you guys out if you're buying any Voigtlander lenses. Before we look at the photos, I just want to say a huge thanks to my awesome patrons. Patreon is my online teaching platform where I post a couple of times a week on anything I've learned about photography to try and help teach others. There's lots of videos and photos on there, so feel free to check it out. Link below. Okay, lens characteristics. Let's first have a look at lens sharpness. Okay, so my sharpness test, I was using the Leica SL camera and I was testing bokeh, lens flare and lens sharpness, the sense sharpness all in the same test. So shooting at the light and then I just lifted the shadow detail in Lightroom, took a center crop. All lenses are shot to f2 at their minimum focus distance. And for my test, the 1.5 is the sharpest of the lenses shown. However, the Apolanthar is sharper still from other people's testing. I then wanted to test the edge sharpness, so I took a corner crop. And again, the 1.5 did really well with the Ultron second. Links to these full rares in the description below. Next, lens characteristics with vignetting first. Heavy vignetting, wide open, less stop down. Here it is at 1.5 and it's mostly gone by 5.6. Sun stars. With the 12 after blades, you get really nice sun stars from this lens from f2 onwards to around f11 and then by f16 it's a bit of a spray this lens is very well corrected with very little lens flare as you can see here the only lens flare i really got was by having the light on the very edge of the frame lens bokeh if you shoot the lens wide open at 1.5 i find it very pleasing with round circular bokeh balls in the center and cat eyes at the edges if you stop the lens down it's hard to see in these examples but you get little mini cogs in terms of distortion, this lens is well corrected with a very slight pink cushion. Now let's look at some more real example photos and in particular looking at the colours. So these photos were shot with like M240 as raw files and then I just applied a Mr. Like a preset just to give a bit more pop to the colours. And shooting in Spain I was more inspired to shoot colour because of the, the blue sky situation different to the grey days we have in the UK. I'm really happy with the colours and yeah, very pleased. Okay, portraits. As a model photographer, portrait photographer, I thought I'd try the 35mm lens for some of my model shoots while I was in Spain. And yeah, happy with the results, although I found I generally prefer a longer lens than 35mm for when shooting portraits. So those are the photos. What do you think? Like? Dislike? Not sure? Let's try and summarise to make things slightly easier. If we are taking the Type 1 lens in particular, that's going to give you a small, lightweight, very nice feeling lens that looks good with very good flare control, great sharpness both in the centre and at the edges when stopped down a little, decent sun stars, minimum distortion, and I'd say in summary it's a well-corrected modern rendering lens. How's it compared to the Leica Simlux 35 1.4, a spherical that many of you like, the FLE version? I don't actually own the Leica lens, but I did do some research in line and people that own both the 35 1.5 and the Leica so that the Leica still wins wide open at 1.4 for that slight 3D pop or micro contrast. Once you stop the lens down to around 2.8, you're going to get similar results from both the Leica Simulux and the Voigtland Nocturne 35 1.5. Fred's done a really great review online and he shows a photo that I can bring up here that shows the Simulux next to the Voigtlander. You can see the Leica lens is a lot bigger, it's heavier, it's $6,000 versus $900. Now the question is, would I buy this lens? And strangely i had this lens with me as i say in spain for 10 days and at no point during that trip was i like wow this lens is amazing dare i say it no point in that trip was i i like oh i need to use this lens i was actually using vintage soviet lenses instead of the 35 mil lens now i'm not sure if this is because i prefer 50 mil to 35 mil but i just wasn't excited by this lens at all i love the look of it and the feel of it but in terms of image quality, it doesn't have that like va va boom uh, feeling. The discontinued Voigtlander Ultron 35 1.7, that really blew me away when I bought that lens. And as I say, if you want something even more perfect, check out my video on the 35 F2 Apo Lanthar.